I promised last time, we have more from the Bazanson House and their garden. It is a wonder to behold, and it's delicious too, I know, because I've tried some of it. So, back to the talk with Brian and his garden. Well, here we are in the next row, and Brian, this is a bonanza on this bush. Yeah, this is our favorite. This is the uh, Sweet 100 um, cherry tomatoes, I guess. Uh, they're not, not really like a grape, but these are like candy. And uh, as you can see, they're, they're, they come in really good clusters, and they're uh, really, really a delight. And you should... You should try that. I should try that. Yeah. Here we go. It's nice and sweet. Beautiful. That's one good tomato. Yeah. See, I get benefits out of doing this show that people don't know about. <laughs> and this is what, as you can see, this plant is totally different than the other ones that I've showed you because those were all determinant tomatoes where they go and grow so high and they only set so many fruit and they all come in almost at identical time. And, and so as you can see, if you look over, they're all short. And this is an indeterminate. As long as you keep picking and the weather is okay, it's going to keep growing. And it's going to keep producing right up until frost. They call it indeterminate because you never know when it's going to stop. That's right. And uh, these we did, we ate a lot of them last year. We dehydrated a lot of them because they're easy to fit in the dehydrator. And uh, it's just a great plant. And as you can see, I've tied it up because it, otherwise we probably wouldn't get down this aisle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, right next to that, we have something you've been talking about ever since we started this conversation, basil. Yeah, this is the basil plant that I told you I had shade cloth on. Uh, when I put the shade cloth on, it was, um, it looked a little peaked. It just wasn't really doing anything. And I put the shade cloth on it and uh, we added a little, uh, uh, little juice to it, you know, and uh, uh, fertilizer, and, and it really came back, and the shade cloth really made a big difference. And uh, we've been picking basil off this as we make our own sauce, you know, just to have one evening. I think I made sauce last night. I came out and grabbed a bunch of it and threw it in. So uh, they're great plants. My wife loves growing them. I've got one uh, on that other garden over there. So these two have been very good to us. They've They've made it through the heat. Well, I tell you, if when I go back over to the North Baptist Church, and if they have having trouble with their basil, I'm going to send them over to see you so you can tell them how to put the shade on there. <laughs> yeah, it was really simple. I used, I, I had one of these cages, and I, uh, I had it cut in half, uh, and, I, and I set it over it, and it's a white cloth. Uh, it's a very breathable cloth. You'll see it back there that I use it for... Um, keeping the moths off of my cabbage and things like that. And it's just enough to shade it so it, it didn't scald. And it keep, the, the, keep the birds away from your sunflower seeds too. Yeah, yeah. I, get, I have a blueberry uh, bush over there that we had the same cloth over it and I kept the birds out. We got a ton of blueberries and then my wife said, that's enough. We took it off and you could see the birds flocking over to the blueberries and they, they, they picked it clean and within a day. I think. Now here's another cherry, but this one is uh, got a slightly different color to it. It almost looks like it's unripe until you get that bright, yeah. brilliant orange in there. Yeah, this is, uh, it's like our Carolina gold, only it's a cherry. It's a uh, sun gold, it's called. It's another variety that's um, less acidic. The yellow ones are less acidic than the, than the regular red tomatoes. And you should try this one too. Here we go again, folks. <laughs> Eat your hearts out. Mmm. <laughs> Very tasty, not as acidic, still sweet. Very good. Yeah, very good tomato. And this is a, a, a indeterminate as well. Uh, those are the two ones that we are going to grow from now on, the Sweet 100s and these Sun Golds. I think you've got to give this something a little something because it's getting a real head, needs yeah. to get a head start on the other one over here. You know, the, actually, uh, that was planted before this one, so it does have a, a head start probably two or three weeks. But um, that plant, the Sweet 100, goes crazy like that every year. It's just an incredible plant. I, I, I'm just dumbfounded by it. Almost seems like you only need one plant. Yeah, uh, that's it. I only have one. <laughs> <laughs> this is a um, um, kind of a ch like a cherry tomato. Um, it's a bigger variety than the Sun, the sun Gold and the Sweet 100s. It's kind of like a mini plum. Yeah, I was just gonna say that it looks it has a plum look to yeah. it. Yeah, and it's um, it's good for salads because it's not too juicy where you, it'll get your salad all wet. So I just usually top the uh, 
the, the end off and then I just cut it the long way and I put a half a dozen of them in the salad and it works out great. Would that be good as a, as a, as a paste type of tomato? You, if you had a excess of these, you could add them to the pa regular paste and throw them in. You, nobody would know the difference, but you want to try that one? Boy. It's I'd not going to be as sweet. Great here today. Yeah, it's not going to be as sweet. Mmm. Juicy. Yeah. That's because I've been watering it today, so it's probably plumped up. But uh, that's even sweeter, I think, than the other one. That's that that that's amazing because it's it's usually the sweet one hundred is the sweetest. But this is the first. I actually got these four plants and a couple others um, from Don Avery here in Whitman. Everybody who is in Whitman knows Don Avery, and he gave me a half a dozen plants, and that the, this is the variety that I have, and it's um, it's a great plant. As you can see, this one here is going crazy, almost as much as the Sweet 100s, and they're uh, another indeterminate, huh? Yeah, yeah, they just keep going. As I, I, that's why I got these cages, and as you can see, around here, I use these clips. If you can see this, it kind of holds the. The this plant. one over here might be a little yeah. easier for our cameraman I, I to see. Kind of hold them from going crazy, you know, so you can get down the aisle. Uh, and it kind of trains them to go straight up, and uh, these are great plants. And if you have limited space, let's say you're living, you know, in a, a small apartment or you have a balcony or something, you can put this in a pot, get one of these cages, and you can have it on your balcony, and you'll have all these kind of tomatoes uh, if you don't have the space. It's really good. Speaking of volunteers, I have a volunteer string bean plant. It, it, I had string beans on here last year, and uh, I just made this with scrap stuff I had around. And uh, it came up all by itself, and it grew all the way over there and connected with the other ones I have. And it's just more Kentucky wonder, but I didn't plant it. These look like they're kind of late starters, too, because, I mean, right. most of the beans are usually gone by this time yeah. of year. Uh, yeah, I, uh, it, the whole garden is late, but this is a... If you can see this here, that's a that's a perfect bean right there. Pick them young and tender. Uh, you can't uh, you can't beat that. That's fresh, great tasting, and you can can them. They're great yeah. to be canning. And there's nothing better than a than a bean right off the vine. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's so tasty, and you know if you, these are pole beans, so you have to have something for them to climb on, but. Um, if you don't have the space, there's bush beans that will take up hardly any space at all. But I, I know what this next one is. I can tell by the color. That's yeah. eggplant. Eggplant. My wife's favorite. Uh, she loved. It's in the nightshade family, and uh, we have some um, gl mini globes, some uh, Japanese style. They're long and slender, and. Uh, We've got some here and some in the next bed we'll show you later. But uh, my wife loved eggplant, so uh, eggplant it is. <laughs> you know. Followed by some peppers. These are these look more like the bell style yeah. peppers, but they got all different colors. Yep, yeah, this is a yellow um, bell pepper. Um, they, they didn't really, uh, they're not th thrilled with the heat. Um, and like I said, they kind of drop their uh, flowers if it gets too hot, but these set and they held on. So these ones here are all reds. They're going to turn red. That's a yellow one. Um, these over here are also going to be red. Um, just takes time to uh, have them turn. And uh, this, this one over here looks maroon. Yeah, this one is uh, a red. It's about ready, ready to go. Um, it's uh, my wife likes red peppers as opposed to green. And so, um, when I was growing up, there was just green. <laughs> but she likes the red, so that's, I didn't even plant a green pepper this year other than the jalapenos and the cubanelles. These uh, are all red or yellow, and uh, they're great. My family, we use as many different colors as we can find. The more color you can put in your diet, the better off you'll be. Okay, why don't we stop here, because we've got to move to another spot now. And we'll be back, and we're going to have... A Bowers of beans coming up. Here we have something that any good wedding needs. An arbor of beans. <laughs> Brian, did you have a wedding out here? Is that why these beans are here? Uh, no, I actually I saw this on um, a YouTube uh, homesteader that I follow. And uh, it's just cattle panels from Tractor Supply. 
Uh, they're 48 inches high and I think they're eight feet long. So I kept them the other way, connected them with zip ties and T-posts and I made the arch. And then you po plant the pole beans down and they, they crawl right up. And this is what I was saying about it's easy to pick yeah. standing up. And yeah, pole, pole beans are one of those things that give a garden height right. as opposed right. to bush. That's right, because, uh, you know, you're growing vertically uh, and it's, you know, you just save so much space. I and mean, if these were bush beans, you'd probably have to have, you know, two rows, three rows. And this is uh, my favorite part of the garden. You bring your little chair out here and lemonade, sit in the shade and That's sip, right? right? I'll tell you, uh, once these have grown through, you, you get a nice little shade. It's, it's really a unique thing. Yeah. Okay, let me get, point out some other things for our trusty cameraman here. Yeah. Beans growing way up over my head. That's right, these are uh, Kentucky Wonders, just like the volunteer that I showed you uh, in the previous row. And uh, we just plant them every year. I had a lot of seeds, they seem to work well here. Um, I had trouble trying to find um, pole beans that were yellow wax. I couldn't get any, so I had to plant some uh, bush variety that are in the next aisle. But uh, my wife's already picked some. As, as you can see how these are dangling down, um, it's beans tonight. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot here to pick, and as long as you pick them, they'll keep growing. Shaquille O'Neal walking through here could just bite them right off the vine. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, uh, I'm six foot, so that's probably seven, at least seven feet. And uh, I, I was so happy that I found this idea uh, on YouTube, and it's a, it's a great idea. I just can't believe uh, I hadn't done it sooner. Okay, why don't we back down through here and let Brian come in and get in some of the shade now. He's been out in the sun the whole time. Right, that's right. The, uh, this does provide shade, but both sides here are uh, the, the pole beans, and they meet in the middle at the top. And it's uh, fantastic. I, I, I really, really love it. And you've still got flowers out here, oh, so yeah. there's a lot oh, more beans to come. Yeah, Look at that. Well, as long as you keep picking, they're going to keep producing. Kind of like deadheading. Right. It's, uh, it's, a great, um, it's a great easy thing to, to grow, too. And over here, more eggplant. This is a different variety, though. Yeah. This here is the, the Japanese style. Uh, they call them little fingers. And there's some that can get really, really long. Well, I don't know. When you compare it to my finger, it's not so little. Yeah. There's a, a bunch over here too that, uh, you know, this I've seen some grow this long. They weren't this little thing variety. Those things are growing. They almost look like uh, purple jalapenos. Yeah, yeah, they're very tasty, and we dice them coins style and add them to stir fries, and and uh, it's a like I said, she really loves the the eggplants. So uh, we've got uh, four there and probably six here. So uh, ten good plants. The eggplant parmigiana's uh, bob, boy, I, I tripped over my tongue on that yeah, one, didn't I? You're drooling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for somebody who loves eggplant parmigiana, right. this is a real bonanza. Oh yeah, the uh, the bigger ones are good for that because you get the planks, but uh, you can uh, you can make these the same way. You just dice them and you add them to the to the dish, and it, it's just an incredible, and it's very healthy for you, too. So. Well, you did notice I did finally get that word bonanza out, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. These uh, se seem to have tolerated the heat and the humidity uh, very well. well you've, got, you've got some more some more fruit starting to grow yeah. here. The flowers are gone, but the, yeah. the stamens are, are popping yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and this back part of the garden gets some shade, so um, I think that might have helped it. You know, uh, didn't have the intense sun all the time, so it's, uh, they seem to be doing well here. Okay, why don't we move around over and we'll go to the netting and see if we can actually get the camera to shoot through the net. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully the sun won't blind our yeah. poor cameraman. Yeah. Now, I remember an old movie from the 60s, late 50s, Troy Donahue growing shade tobacco in Connecticut, and here you're growing shade vegetables. Yeah, this is a, a, a little uh, homemade um, insect repellent. It's just uh, water tubes that I got at Home Depot uh, that I cut to fit, and this is netting I got on Amazon to keep the bugs, uh, specifically the cabbage moths, from getting in there to, uh, I would have 
I don't think I've ever grown as good of of this crop because I've never had this before, and the, the moths devastated the the crop. Usually, I almost gave up on it at one point, but these seem to be really growing nicely. In the front row, we have broccoli, um, and these are all cool weather plants. So as we get closer to September, these will really pick up. Uh, they don't really care for the heat, but that's why I put it in the back here with this more shade. So broccoli and then red cabbage, green cabbage, and kale. And these, um, they're all in the same category of uh, the cool weather crops. And uh, so they all work well together. Broad leafy vegetables. Yeah, they uh, brassicas, I believe, is if I'm not mistaken. Although the kale looks more like it's got a million different le yeah, little leaves yeah. on there just because of the lacing on the edges. We've already had a couple of pickings off of this. Uh, I just take the netting off and we go in there and I, I usually weed when I'm in there and um, uh, we just pick what we need for that night and, and usually uh, my wife loves kale so it's uh, one of those crops that uh, she's really happy that it's turned out this way. And over behind us here on the other side we have, we have some squashes. This here is a summer squash. Now these have been, uh, these are at the tail end. That's a summer squash there. Uh, the, the heat, humidity, and the squash bugs have got, as you can see over here, there's a spot where I had to pull one out that was history. And then we have zucchini and summer squash all the way down. Uh, and as this these progress, um, I'm going to probably pull these out and do a uh, succession planting and plant more of the same so they'll come up now that the cool weather is is coming by. I think I saw one, actually a couple out here. Oh, I see a zucchini. No, uh, that was a stem I think that I saw. Oh, there's one there can you, can you and one there. there. That, Let me uh, get around behind you here, Brian, so uh, Brian can get in with the camera. There's a couple of uh, zucchinis that I haven't picked yet, plus the summer squash we had out there. So uh, there's, there'll be three that'll be on the dinner table this weekend, probably. And uh, very cool. These are close to the end, so they're probably going to get pulled out over the weekend or maybe next weekend, and then I'll plant new ones. And I just direct seed these, and they come up really quick, seven to ten days. Over here... Uh, these are uh, Cubanelle peppers. They are uh, not hot. And I was just going to say, because with something named Cuban, I'd kind of expect it to be warm. Right. These are um, a thin-walled, very tasty pepper. And uh, I've picked a ton of these already. There's some here in the back that, that are uh, pretty good size. And uh, they've, uh, they've done well. You know, they're very tasty. They're not hot at all. And behind you here, you told me that this is more of your, more from your friend Don Avery. Don, Don Avery plums, they're uh, San Marzano style. Uh, these look a little bit bigger. These were both in buckets. My wife had put them in five-gallon buckets, and they were outgrowing it, and they didn't look so good. So we put them in the ground here, added some, uh, some garden tone uh, to them, and uh, they've seemed to thrive. So I'm really happy that we saved them. Okay, and if, you, if our camera moves back just a little bit, we've got some other stuff here. What have we got here? This, this is the bush bean variety that I was telling you about. Um, I had a problem. Um, I've got some chipmunks, and they love eating these shoots. And this should have been a four-row bed, and i got a row and a half here, so I'm going to replant some more. But these are the yellow wax. They, I don't know if there's any yet, but there's plenty of flowers. Oh, there's one little one right here. Uh, these are actually my favorite. I love yellow wax beans. They just, uh, you know, if you like to make a three bean salad or whatever, but they, uh, they're very good. And, but I could only find them in the bush variety. And, um, that little one you found in there was, couldn't tell that was a wax bean because no, it's still green. It's still, it's still, uh, very immature. Yeah. So, um, hopefully I'll, I'll get a uh, bunch as the, as the month goes by. So these are uh, more jalapeno peppers. I, um, uh, tried to get, there's a variety of, of jalapenos. It's called a natapeno. It's the jalapeno flavor without the heat. But I couldn't find these, so I had to settle for the regular hot ones. So um, I'm gonna be very careful with the seeds. And uh, flavor's great, but... Uh, Serve them up with a fire extinguisher. Yeah, you know, make some salsa or nachos and uh, 
but jalapenos uh, sometimes you know, when you uh, when you grow them one year they're hot as heck and then next year they're mild so it's hit or miss okay we have one more bed to take a look at I think it's pretty much a squash but we'll get to that one real quick in just a moment well, I suppose we ought to call this one Rerun Alley because what we have, what we're looking at here is more baby butternuts. Yeah, I uh, try to do succession planting where I, uh, if I start something early in the year and I know they're probably going to die out like the uh, zucchinis and things like that, cucumbers, so I try to do another batch. And these have an interesting story. These are more baby butternuts here. And these came out of a baby butternut that my wife saved the seeds from. And and I didn't really expect uh, them to do too much because we ate it on like a Monday and then she gave me the seeds like on a Wednesday or Thursday. So they didn't really dry out so much. So I put 18 seeds in a container and 15 of them came up and they started growing really well. And so I said, we, we better transplant these. So we had a spare bed here in the last bed so we put them in here and two passed away <laughs> so uh, we had went from 18 seeds to 15 plants to 13 thriving plants and uh, they hopefully you know even if we get one butternut out of this we've come out ahead so that's that's kind of like you know 13 being the lucky number for change and let's let's hope that that's the lucky number because they look really healthy right now and they're in a good spot so uh, you know, granted, uh, most gardeners would never put this amount of butternut in one small spot like this, but these are baby butternuts, and I could put a, a small little fence around it uh, to keep them contained if I have to, but hey, the free seeds, free plants, we'll see what happens. Now we move back down here a little bit further, and we've got something very interesting to see. These, you told me, are cucumbers. Yep, these are cucumbers. These are, um, uh, let's see, market more. Uh, in the, on this row here and if you uh, this was my sweet pea bed uh, the sweet peas in the spring will will grow up the, the uh, vines but they don't like the heat so I had to come up with something else so I knew the succession planting for the cucumbers was really a good time to do it so I planted these seeds these are market moors they're uh, standard eight inch slicers and they will grow up the vine and I just kept adding things to hopefully that they'll stay upright and uh, and uh, stay away from my chipmunks. <laughs> okay, this is something we want to see here. Brian, look at this. A cucumber vine. I don't know how many people have actually seen a cucumber vine grow up a trellis, because when those fruit come through, they're going to be a little on the heavy side. Yeah, that's why if you notice there's a clip there, and they have tendrils um, right here. These are the tendrils that you can see that they'll grab onto anything that's there, because they want to. Uh, grab on and run that's what they are by nature so I, that's why i wired this all up this way and hopefully we'll have a wall of cucumbers in september uh, but i knew my other cucumbers were at the end of the line so i had to come up with some some kind of uh plan b and the back row of those cucumbers over there is a variety i've never tried before and it's called a bait alpha and it's supposedly a seedless cucumber that's to very tolerant of heat. So I give it a, I give it a try and see what happens. Um, they're starting to get flowers, so uh, hopefully uh, we'll get some and uh, test out that new variety. I like to try a couple of different new things every year just to see what happens. So. And you've come up with a brand new gardening term, too, just a minute ago. A wall of cucumbers. Wall of cucumbers, that's right. They, you know. Uh, I, I actually think this is probably the best way to grow cucumbers. I, I uh, just use bush variety up front, but th these here, I think, uh, given the uh, good circumstances, will grow right up here. And, and it's nice because then you'll see the cucumbers hanging down. You'll know when they're ready. You won't get too far because if you uh, let a cucumber on the vine turn yellow, it signifies to the plant, I've done my job, I've completed enough seeds to reproduce, and they'll stop making cucumbers. So you want to make sure you pick your cucumbers green. Don't let them get yellow. Okay, well that I think does it for your garden. That was quite a tour. Oh, one more? Well, we one have, more? This is an interesting story. These four cucumbers in the back over here, my wife started on the porch in hanging planters. And they started to fizzle out a little, 
So I said, well, maybe we should take these out of the planters on the porch and put them in, we have a spot. So I put them in there and they're starting to turn green. So hopefully uh, they'll catch up to these uh, other ones on the, on the vine here. And so we'll hopefully have some more cucumbers because um, I like pickles. <laughs> yeah, when you you another you're almost coining another thing here too. Instead of the hanging by the hanging gardens of Babylon, the hanging gardens of Byzantium. <laughs> yeah, you know it's uh, I'm lucky that I have this opportunity to do this. A lot of people don't get that opportunity, but um, I definitely feel it. At my age, my back and my knees are pretty sore, so uh, it takes a lot of effort, a lot more work than people think it is. But um, I love it. It's not work. It's a hobby. And, uh, you know, you get produce. Yeah. Produce. And on that note, we will say we're going to stop production here, <laughs> producing the produce. Yeah. And thank you all. Thank you, Brian, first, for showing sure. us your garden. It was my pleasure anytime. Uh, yeah. And thank you all for watching this uh, Garden Spaces series, because it, <laughs> it certainly was not a single program thing. Right, right. And Keep your eye out because we, have, we will still be doing some more gardens. And don't forget, if you have a garden, vegetable or floral, send us an email to info at whca.tv and let us know about it. So long until next time.